Welcome to tonight's episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel, and as always, I have a very special guest for you, Janice Lawrence Clark, who's the founder of Cafe, the Caribbean American Fashion Exchange. She'll be with us for the next 30 minutes, so stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Beyond Focus TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both a national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV, where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. Like I said, I have a very special guest for you. You're going to love her. She's the founder of CAFE, which is the Caribbean American Fashion Exchange. Ms. Janice Lawrence Clark. Oh, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me, Lydia. It's well, a pleasure. It's, it's great to have you here to have a, a fellow Trinidadian sister. Hello. <laughs> on the program. You know, I've got a rep TNC. It's no secret. I always, whenever I have a guest on who's got either roots from TNC or directly from there, I've got to shop them out. So, of course, um, TNT's in the house. But let's get straight to it. Let's talk a little bit about what CAFE is. We know it stands for the Caribbean American Fashion Exchange. Yes, it does. And it's a marketing strategy to position Caribbean heritage brands, Caribbean brands, on the market, right, in the U.S., um, putting them before maybe three different target audiences, general public, trade and industry, and the individual. Right, so it, that's, it's a marketing strategy. So we look for brands that are ready to sell to stores, mm -hmm. not just do a fashion show, but let's do the show and sell your merchandise at the same time. So what really prompted you to decide to actually go ahead and form CAFE in the first place? My God, Lydia. CAFE came to me, I'd say, my earliest documentation that I picked up the other day is 19, October 1985 when I presented it to um, a government official in, from my beloved country. So that's the earliest. And it was from being in the industry and recognizing that there was a need and knowing that I knew all these talented people that lived in Trinidad and Tobago. And here I am in New York in the, in the fashion industry and I'm seeing all of this going on. And at the time, President Reagan had come up with um, the 807, the Caribbean Basin Initiative 807. And that was... Um, a strategy to have merchandise manufactured in the Caribbean and shipped back to the U.S. So I thought, oh, this is perfect. Trinidad and Tobago could be one of those countries and, mm -hmm. you know, have factories there and what have you. So that was how I started looking into this. And one thing led to the other. The overall um, vision, that first vision of CAFE, saw Trinidad and Tobago as the center of, or the capital of fashion for the Caribbean because of its geographic location, mm -hmm. you know, being able to be right there to ship to different parts of the world, the South America, the U.S., Europe, etc. And of course, the cultural positioning of Trinidad and Tobago. Absolutely. So that was the idea and there's a, you know, the building of, of, of a set of showrooms that uh, would house showrooms for designers from up and down the Caribbean and there being um, a fashion market that would fit within the global calendar, all of this. And I, I researched it and at the time um, there's a lady named Ruth Finley who is the publisher of the fashion calendar. Mm -hmm. And the fashion calendar storehouses all the events that go on in, in the fashion world. So I spoke to her to find out when is the best time to do this. I mean, I went through. You went in. <laughs> I, I dug in. And uh, it's, it's morphed, it's transformed since then. You know, yet the need is still there. Mm -hmm. Um, recently, I worked on uh, um, a consultancy 
to help develop the strategic plan for the Trinidad and Tobago fashion industry, right, which was just released last year, last September. And the need, many of the things that I had been talking about in the 80s. They're still relevant? Still relevant. Wow. And that could mean one of two things. That could either mean that there is obviously a key issue that we just have not really addressed or is still a relevant issue or that is just really that important? Well, you know, I think it's a combination of the mm -hmm. two because it is important because we do need to diversify our economy. However, I feel as though the the artists and artisans want and need the promotion, the marketing, um, the support, but the powers that be don't realize or recognize that fashion is an industry and it has to be addressed in a holistic way from the education, straight through the presentation, straight through the marketing and the management, and it has to be funded. And oftentimes, I know they've like taken groups of designers to different shows in, in Europe, all wonderful, but then there's no continuity. Yes. Okay? They go to... England and maybe they go to some of the different stores and of course they do a show you know maybe during London Fashion Week and then they leave and then there's no one to continue what you started there and That's this is what point. exactly and this is what cafe addresses this is what cafe addresses because first of all of course you have me here as a resource but not only that Cafe is not just for the show. Market is built into it. So after the show, the buyer is able to come and shop your line, shop your collection. After you leave, you have someone here that can field phone calls for you if necessary, but that can also stay, stay in touch with you, stay in touch with your buyer, with your buyers, to make sure that everything is happening. Did you, do you have enough fabric? Did you ship on time? Is the, sh is the delivery, you know, wow. there are all these things that, that all these um, intricacies that go on that people aren't aware of. And I think what happens is because a lot of people, especially designers, like many other Caribbean artists, they're focused on the artistic aspect of it but really forget the business aspect so they're so focused on just getting the art out but they don't understand that there's marketing behind this they just want to draw they just want to sew they just want to sketch and make the pieces okay but what happens next what is your next step you walked in this great fashion show your sh your line was showcased okay what happens next exactly is it just a resume builder okay it's great to say i was in london fashion week and new york fashion week and couture fashion week how do we get in hold of you and it, it, you brought up an excellent point there because are you ready for what happens after fashion week exactly exactly and that's why part of cafe has um a survey attached to it. It's an export survey that was developed by the Harlem um, Assistance Export Assistance um, Division of the U.S. Government Trade, right? And this is to make sure that the people that are participating have manufacturing capability and have the funding. And I have to tell you, though, that even though I had put these things in place. My desire to see something happen, to make it happen, caused me to sort of bypass some of the things that I've put in place. Well, hold that thought, Janice. <laughs> we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Stay with us.
Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Fatal, sitting here with Janice Lawrence Clark, who's actually the founder of Cafe, the Caribbean American Fashion Exchange. So, Janice, right before the break, we're in a, a great topic. You're actually, you know, you left us on a high note. So you were saying, you know, you give them a survey, right, after they leave any of your events, right? right. So kind of take it from there. Okay, so with Cafe, there's a survey. In order to participate in the program, you have to complete the survey. The survey helps to determine your export ability. Now, being, let me just jump back to being Janice and wanting to make the thing happen, because that is my reputation. I get the job done. <laughs> I like okay? that. I get it done, right? With grace under pressure. And I didn't give myself these, these titles, okay? Um, but being myself and knowing, okay, I've been talking about this, talking about this. Got to have this. Got to make this happen. All right, let me... Okay, so the, the score wasn't there. But let me push a little bit. L let me try, do what we can to make something happen because we have to make something happen. It almost gave me a nervous breakdown because, of course, people weren't ready, mm -hmm. you know. And I realized it was me thinking about, oh, my God, my reputation because I keep saying I, I'm doing this thing and I'm doing this thing. And once again, it's not happening. It's not happening because the people aren't ready to do it. Right. And they're not ready. And would you believe in hindsight I realized I've tweaked it again, you know. So I, earlier during the break, I was sharing with you that I've tried to leave it alone. Lord knows I have tried to give up the Caribbean American Fashion Exchange and this fashion program with the Caribbean. I've tried. She's I following you. It's haunting you. I fell on my back for three days after rewriting Cafe earlier last year. And I said, Lord, take it away from me. I said, it, it's, it's killing me. It's not serving me any purpose. What am I supposed to do? And, <laughs> and he basically said, um, it's not that you're doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. You just have to do it differently. And with that, I said, well, show me. Right. Show me what to do. And out of that came the third Tuesday series of events that was held last year. Because I realized, okay, fine, I keep talking about this thing. I have to show something. I have to do something. And he said, Tuesday, my birthday was on Tuesday in 2016. He said, the third Tuesday, my birthday is the 3rd of May. The 3rd of May. Everybody heard that, right? <laughs> birthday presents in the mail. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and he said, third Tuesdays. So from June through October, I held the third Tuesday Caribbean American Fashion Exchange Cafe fashion and culture salon and it was a combination of fashion like pop-up store with a cultural piece so for example in June we had Mr. Lee G as the cultural performer he's from Trinidad and Tobago in July we had the Haitian band Montvillion Montvillino